sorry, I'm uh, so I'm in the in southern hemisphere now, isn't it? Other way around. Other way around. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, Australia. There we go. Um, thank you. It's great to be here. I've come from Britain uh, to case this place out uh, because we are leaving Europe, as you may have heard, <laughs> and we might have to take you guys over again, <laughs> if that's all right with you. Uh, are you all fine with that? I'll take that as a resounding yes in the traditional British fashion. <laughs> Come, uh, our Prime Minister, uh, Theresa May, she encouraged us to get out into the world as Brits and create a greater global Britain. Now, we have done that before. <laughs> and you could kind of sense the rest of the world hearing those words, turning to each other and saying, Nail everything down. <laughs> Nail absolutely everything down. They clearly have some new museums and they need them filling up. <laughs> Brexit is uh, clearly was a you know, historic, one of the most incredible moments in the history of television for the faces on the Remain pundits on Brexit nights as the result became clear. One of the most amazing faces in the history of the front of the human head. And we saw something very similar in November when America uh, voted uh, Donald Trump, God rest his soul, um, <laughs> if, if it is ever found. Um, <laughs> when America voted Trump, it was a very similar, similar face, that look of dread realisation. I thought I'd recognise that face, but I couldn't quite place it. And I went away and I thought about it, and I realised it is just an everyday face. We've all seen it. It is the exact same face you see on someone who's gone to the vet and put their cat basket on the vet's table and said to the vet, it's little tiddles, he's right off his milk. Could you have a look at him, please? And then opened up the cat basket and pulled out some underpants, some socks, and some towels. And had that self-same look come across their face. That look that unmistakably says, what the fuck have I left in my tumble dryer? <laughs> that, that is what we saw on Brexit, Brexit night. Similar when Trump was elected. And both of those votes fueled a lot by the immigration Issue. And I do wish as a world we'd grow up about immigration, particularly when you think of all the doctors we have stolen from overseas. I think most illegal immigrants only come to Britain and Australia to see their local GP. <laughs> <laughs> and there's even rumours now that we could be modelling our immigration system on yours. I'm not entirely comfortable with this, to be honest, Australia. Because the way I see it, Australian rules immigration is basically the same as Australian rules football in that it is needlessly violent and aggressive, despite there being a vast amount of space. <laughs> and it is... It is completely and utterly baffling to the outsider. <laughs> there must be a reason it hasn't caught on anywhere else. So, is this the right town to do that joke in? Melbourne. Um, so, um... <laughs> Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. I have not enjoyed the Syrian crisis. Um, <laughs> just not my thing. Um, I prefer cricket and uh, <laughs> I see it as an either or, really. There's only one. And Vladimir Putin has chosen the wrong one of those two activities. <laughs> um, the Syrian situation for me is a balding man's head of an issue. In that there is an increasing distance between the two sides. <laughs> A general desire to just try and cover the whole thing up <laughs> and allegations that chemicals may have been involved. <laughs> Whereas the broader situation encompassing everything that's happened across the whole region in Iraq with Islamic State as well, I say is more like a steaming lion shit at a child's birthday picnic. <laughs> Bear with me. Uh, because whilst it is deeply unpleasant and unsettling in itself, it also suggests that further problems lie ahead. <laughs> uh, uh, Nail to this man as well. Thank you, Melbourne. Your witness, no further questions. <laughs>